Over the course of my four year trading journey, I've witnessed the evolution of my playbooks from non-existent to mediocre to finally irreplaceable. If you're interested in understanding the process of creating systematic playbooks that have personally transformed my trading approach, then you're in the right place. I'm on Bias Trading and let me share with you my six step framework to creating a playbook. In the initial stage, it's crucial to explore and investigate potential opportunities. I achieve this by logging price action or trades that capture my interest. To facilitate this process, I recommend setting up a dedicated folder where you can save hundreds of charts that intrigue you. Think of it as creating a comprehensive case file to refer back to whenever needed. This has many pros, but over time it can be really easy to create fake ideas of how setups are played if you're only using memory. By actually having hundreds of charts to refer to, you can easily see the similarities of how particular tickers play out. This is probably the simplest step, but it just takes a good amount of time. Two, once I've identified a repeatable pattern through my discovery phase, it's time to craft a strategy. This involves outlining the specific requirements that must be met for the pattern or trade to occur. In the context of small caps, these are often requirements that include gap percentage, intraday percentage, price, volume, spike percentage, among a couple other different factors. It's important to note that these are just a few examples of the requirements you may consider when crafting a trading strategy. The key is to identify the factors that have consistently proven to be influential in generating profitable trades within your chosen market or trading style. As you gain experience and refine your playbook, you might discover that additional requirements uh, specific to your approach will need be needed. These could include maybe additional indicators, chart patterns, fundamental factors like cash and all that kind of stuff, or even sentiment, uh, sentimental analysis techniques. The goal is to create a comprehensive set of guidelines that provide a clear signal for entering and exit trades. Next is risk management. No trading strategy is complete without a robust risk management plan. Each strategy typically requires its own set of risk management methods tailored to its unique characteristics. These methods commonly include setting a stop loss level, determining the maximum allowable loss per day, defining position sizing as a percentage of the total portfolio or your account, uh, and incorporating measures for black swan protection. Additionally, trade management factors should also be taken into account um, when defining the risk management plan. These could be break-even stops uh, once one or two criteria are met. Uh, for me, often in small caps, it could be if it's holding above the open price or reclaiming VWAP later in the day as the closed red percentage odds are normally worse. Now, I would say for risk management, it's really useful to have the idea that your stop should be whenever your trade becomes wrong. Now, a lot of people have said this simply, so you could just say that you know if it breaks a previous high, that is when you're you know technically wrong. For me, that is when my trade edge has significantly decayed. So once the price action or something happens that goes so against my general trade plan that the odds are significantly lower, that is when I am wrong. Um, so that's how I think about it. It's a slightly bit different than most people, um, but overall, I just try and use statistics to guide me on how I should have trade management and risk management in my setups. In my experience, nearly every trading strategy has new, uh, nuanced aspects that can be optimized to enhance profitability. These new nuances are often require a combination of discretion or experience to identify, but they can also be used. Uh, they can also be refined using data-driven approaches. By continuously fine-tuning and optimizing these nuances, you can increase your overall edge in the market and actually improve a lot of the performances of your strategies. Now, obviously, this is in the realm of potentially overfitting, and this does take some experience and just a lot of trial and error in, in most cases to find what the sweet spot is. Um, a lot of this is kind of coming down to parameter optimization. I'll probably do a video in the future just about this, but currently I have a whole topic about that really in the bootcamp of how to backtest. Um, however, the nuances are a really big part of a strategy. Most of the time, even in small caps, the general edge is very clear. We all know that most of the time they fade and in hot cycles, yes, they do normally um, can actually be beneficial to long, but that isn't the general trend over you know many, many years. So overall, most people are looking to do all day faders or something like that or shorting extensions in a small cap. So the general idea is very basic, but the actual nuances of that price action and how to get the maybe the most R or the highest win rate or to have the lowest drawdowns or whatever you're optimizing for, those nuances normally allow you to achieve those kind of things and it's not the general idea itself. Whereas in like large caps and futures, normally the general idea itself is actually the, the kind of difficult thing to find 
So nuances normally aren't as big of a factor as they are in small caps. That's at least from my experience. Um, maybe in the future, I'll find that there is, you know, a couple more nuances in large caps and futures as well. But at least from building at least like 10 algos right now for futures and trading small caps for, you know, four years pretty much, um, that's at least been my findings. Once the strategy has been formulated and its hypothesis established, it's time to gather evidence through rigorous testing. I personally prefer building the strategy using programming languages. So this is normally Python or C-sharp, depending on the specific market. Python is normally for all my small caps, equities kind of things, and C-sharp is normally for ninja traders, so it's normally for futures. Now, I then backtest the strategy over many years of historical data, and it is crucial to evaluate its performance. Additionally, I'll do robustness testing techniques, such as Monte Carlo's, parameter optimization, out of sample testing, walk forwards, um, and these can all be employed to assess the strategy's resilience under different market conditions or its ability to still perform well over general data. If you're interested in backtesting your own strategy or maybe turning it into an algo, feel free to reach out to me using the link below in the description to book a call to see uh, if it would be beneficial to hire me to code it for you. Lastly, in the last crucial step, I will thoroughly review the backtesting and other testing results to assess whether the strategy holds a consistent edge over time and exhibits robustness. It's worth emphasizing that this is where the majority of strategies fail. However, for the strategies that pass through this rigorous analysis and demonstrate promising results, they become ready for forward testing, which is live trading. This marks an exciting milestone on the path to a successful strategy for most traders. Now, normally for forward testing, uh, I would normally do that for a month to two months, most of the time. Um, I've seen many methods and I actually talked to a lot of traders to how, do, uh, how they do forward testing. For me, most of the time, I'm just trying to see if it is getting around similar results um, as the backtesting results throughout that kind of whole month and if it's overall profitable. If so, then I kind of start to add more size to it. Some people um, actually leave the strategy in just sim trading for that whole one to two months. And then if it is, you know, in a drawdown that whole time, they'll just leave it in the sim trading until it kind of gets out of that drawdown. Now, I think that can be a good approach and he's a very successful trader, the person that does this. Um, but overall, at the moment, I'm sticking with my method where I'm just trying to see if it has similar results. If it doesn't have similar results, I'm pretty much just turning it off. Um, but sometimes it can be useful to keep these running in the background as because the market is always changing. Once we have a different market environment, that strategy could actually become alive again and uh, you know become very profitable. Um, so I can understand the argument for keeping it running the whole time and just kind of seeing if it pops up again. Now, before we delete any strategy that didn't meet uh, expectations, I really recommend creating a junk folder to store, store all your previous attempts. This simple practice will save you significant time in the future as you can always revisit these strategies and potentially build upon them. Remember, even an unprofitable strategy isn't entirely useless. It can serve as a valuable learning experience. So further enhance the optimization and accessibility of your playbooks, consider creating a PDF document that explains each strategy in detail as you will often forget all these kind of details about a strategy once you are looking at it in you know, three months or even a year after creating it. Now, these are just a few ways I found very beneficial for myself. I always recommend you only take the parts you think could be useful or maybe just leave your suggestions below. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed, please like it and share it with anyone else you might.